All right, it is time for the last chance. DreamHack StarCraft Masters Grand Finals. It's a big old best of seven. And of course, up here in the top right hand side, none other than the finisher. It is Serral. For those who don't know, he's from Finland. That's why we... The, the finisher. Yep, explaining jokes makes them funnier, pig. Keep doing that. Cool. Down here in the bottom left hand side, in the red, it is Trap. And Trap has blitzed his way through to this finals, as has Serral. We've just cast some awesome series from both of them. Now, Serral looks like he wants to go for a 15 hatch. He does not want to get that blocked. Put it down, put it down, put it down now. Ooh, and Trap has got to be annoyed at that. Now, if Trap didn't opt for the early probe, going for a 15 hatchery is really early and really expensive. It slows down your build quite a bit. But if they commit to sending a probe across the map early and waste that mining time, it's well worth it as the Zerg player. So well done there by Serral, anticipating the block out of Trap and saying, you know what? I am going to actually have my build work out beautifully. We're going to take it on location. We're going we're gonna to absolutely friggin' smash because I'm not going to have to worry about Glaive Adepts coming in. Or Oracles diving into a third base that's not properly defended. I'm not going to have to worry about Oracles finding their way in. So a good start here for Serral is defending that probe harass quite well. Trap just going to go for the Nexus. Now, I have seen a lot of Stargate play from Trap. He is one of the OG best Stargate players in the world, especially opening against Zerg. I do find his mid-game sometimes lacking. He was very close to getting taken out by Solar. And we're going to take a look at exactly how Solar did that in the games he won. And also, <clears throat> why his builds in the games he lost were a little lackluster, in my opinion. And try to understand the mind games and exactly why Solar chose those builds. Because it really... I thought Solar was just going to take him out. Um, Solar was up in that series massively. And uh, started to do things like building Corruptors versus Void Rays. And, and don't get me wrong, there was, there was a point, I think it was even here on Pillars of Gold, where it looked like Trap was going to die. And he did this, like giant battle where he's blinking back stalkers on all sides and he's microing every single unit he just kept saving immortals like he had some awesome 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 micro moments and things but i do think sometimes that uh that trap does present weakness to him to his opponents uh, in his zerg versus protoss build orders now serral has snuck one thing across he'd like to get that into scout but the overlord goes straight in the main and serral's been doing this pretty consistently and you'll notice that because he goes in there so early, even if they built a Stalker, he's able to get to the dead space. So I really, I, I'm, I'm actually straight up upset that no one has studied Serral's play enough to adapt to this. I give a lot of advice to Serral in my casts and things. I say he should do this. His opponents are always doing this. But Trap here, making the same mistake Serral's last opponents have done. <clears throat> Every game at the moment, he sends his first Overlord to the natural. Then he flies in about this deep. If you just put your pile on here and hide your tech down here, he's not going to see it with his overlord. But people are literally putting their tech in his face and saying, Hello, Serral, would you like a warning of what tech I'm going? And it's it's a big mistake from Trap. I've, I've got to be critical here because you know you're probably going to face Serral. You should have watched his openings and you should know that you don't want to give him any free advantages because now Serral feels safe enough to not bother with overlord speed. He's just building queens, zerglings. He's getting his defenses ready. And I think a missed opportunity here in the opening for Trap. Howling Speed about to kick in, does kick in. There's two Adepts. Seeing that there's seven Zerglings, just the very minimal amount you really need to deal with those Adepts. But enough to, to keep them back for now. The Oracle coming out. A Void Ray behind this. <clears throat> I like the way Serral's hiding Overlords. So we can morph those into Overseers from these corners really far away and send them in. But he's not going too deep. Now that Oracle comes in, gets two Creep Tumors. Two active ones, even. Serral's going to have to spend some energy to replace that. But no big direct damage. No, like, drones going down or anything like that. Now, the Adepts are shading around, checking there's nothing at the third. Serral will come in with that Zergling. Could try to pick off that probe, but the Voidry is there. <coughs> of course, for those of you coming here after watching my semi-finals cast, yes, I am casting this uh, live on stream off of the replays just very soon after the tournament finished. And uh, unfortunately, I have been coerced into putting bacon on. I didn't address that for the entire video, even though halfway through the previous video, we did <laughs> suddenly switch outfits. And yes, it's a strip of bacon. There's been a few other nasty suggestions about what it might be, but uh, it is not that. No. Is that a second Stargate? A second Void Ray, sorry. 
<clears throat> so Trap sometimes does a two Void Ray opening. He doesn't really like the six or eight Void Ray opening. He doesn't do it much. But he shows two Void Rays, which gives off the illusion that he's doing that while going into a much quicker charge, plus one attack, and just playing a standard ground Protoss. However, there are scenarios where he's obsessed with Blink Stalker Disruptor against Zerg. And that's a very fragile composition. It can work really well, but it can also look kind of bad if it gets surrounded and overwhelmed. The Stalkers just don't really have a lot of bang for their buck, and the Disruptors need to land just about perfectly. So keep our eyes on what upgrades come out here. As six Adepts joining up. And only an Oracle into two Voids. And those Voids, man, they're going to be upset. They haven't killed anything yet. Just look at this. He's killed one Overlord, two Zerglings, two Creep Tumors. And he's finally going to find an Overlord up in the corner of the map. And it's actually the one morphing into an Overseer. So that's actually fantastic. The Adept shading on in. They could commit to that, dude. Serral's not on top of that. Oh, he cancels all but two. And just enough to one-shot these drones. Nice move by Trap. That's well worth it. Grabs four drones. Grabs a fifth one. And Serral does finally clean that up. Serral's pushing across right now, guys. There are six queens in these two overlords. It is the German taxi looking to break through Trap. Now, Trap does not have a lot of ground units yet. Oh, his gateway explosion's almost there. I think just give up the third. This is a 39 drone German taxi. This is about as aggressive as they come. This is not one with seven or eight queens. This is just six queens. A bunch of Zerglings and a couple of Ravages and Roaches. The shield batteries aren't quite done yet. Those queens, look at that dropping creep out of the Overlords. He could put a Tumor down there as well. The queens already take out one Void Ray on the left. Bile's going down, taking out these shield batteries. And look at that. He just focuses down the batteries. The queens are overwhelming these air units. And look at that. Bile. Oh, he just needs to click those shield batteries down. These queens will crush this fight. Serral just catching him. Way too greedy. 55 probes here for Trap. Not, not scouting the fact that Serral had next to no drones. All those probes going down and a decisive push and a punishing finish in game one. Serral not having any messing around. He's just going to push in. He's droning behind this now. Notice that even killing the third and 10 probes, he's actually behind in workers. So he wants to do more damage here. He's spreading creep from those queens. The Void Ray is going to come forward and pick off a few Ravages. A little slow to transfuse. The queens are going to have to come forward. And he did send three queens home and an overlord to go inject. He didn't want to build more queens at home, so he's actually flying his queens home. It's a return tip trip. He told the taxi to wait. And this taxi as well, he's going to try and evacuate the queens. I mean, that is the advantage of the German taxi, isn't it? A lot of these other pushes, the soul stroll, for instance, you can't actually evacuate the queens. If you walk your queens across the map, there's no way to get them home. Now, Trap, is he dead? Some would say no, because the economy's okay, but it's not really, is it? I mean, there's Creep blocking his third base right now. He's got a handful of charge lots there. He's going to try and make a Robo Bay because Disruptors are his big comeback unit. But how do you how do you ever catch up here with Serral? I mean, Serral's building Roaches right now, so he's really respecting the threat of counter-aggression. I would say almost too much. I think he could build another 10 drones just, just fine. He feels that 52 drones versus two base Protoss is more than enough of a lead, though. And taxi's coming over. It's an angry taxi driver. Uber has been taking his job for a while. And look at that. Oh, it's a taxi gank. One Void Ray does go down there. So blink and yeah, double Robo Disruptor. It's Trap's comeback comp. I think Stalkers are one of the worst units for comebacks. Disruptors are one of the best. Stalkers happen to go well with Disruptors, so I understand why you do it. Good against Speed Bane's, good against Roaches and Ravages. He's going to try and take a third on the other side of the map. Pylon does fall. This creep still spreading over there. God, Serral's so annoying. Only 57 drones, so Serral's going to keep attacking. He's not really adding many drones. He's got a ton of Roach Ravager. The Oracle sees this. The first Disruptor's about to pop. He's got to get Chronoing him, and indeed he is. He knows he doesn't have a lot of time. He's got to keep this third base alive. If he can't get that third base alive, Serral's just going to outproduce him. He already has a gigantic army advantage. A lot of Zealot Archon will do well versus the Zerglings. Ooh, nice shot. Oh, gets like two Roaches, a Ravager, a few Lings. The Banelings, though. Oh, he's going to run the Zealots. Run your Zealots. He's got his own Zealots kind of trapped there a little bit. Uh-oh, the Oracle comes forward. One Disruptor goes down. Slow Banelings just pushing him back. Disruptor shot does come forward. Grabs a couple of the Ravages. Another Disruptor shot comes forward. That one not being microed. And the Banelings do wash up on the Archons. But it's a cancelled third base. The taxi arrives again. And oh my god, the renewability with that taxi. 
as long as he keeps the taxi of queens alive, he never needs to build hydras to deal with the void ray and the oracle. Dude, this is so clever. I never thought of it like this. I never thought of just using the queens as mobile anti-air for the rest of the game long. I, I mean, I, I've seen it once or twice, but I've never seen it like, was this the third or fourth attack? Them coming back over after going home, defending a void ray, coming back across the map. Really well played. I'm sure Lambo is very proud out there right now watching this and going, yeah, Cyril, you do good, mate. Steal my German strategies, it's all good. Single Roach goes down there. But Queen Drop in the main base, oh, about the most annoying harassment you can deal with. Stalker Warp in being forced up there. Uh-oh, you don't want to lose it. Taxi takes a fair beating, does get out. <clears throat> so here we go, trap on 42 probes. Basically, we're just watching his dying throws at this point. He's going to try and make an epic comeback. I, I feel like some of Trap's coolest micro moments come when he's like so dead in a game that you just look at it and you go, wouldn't it be cool if you did this from an even position rather than epically behind? But look at that. Nice disruptor shot. And another one going out, hitting some roaches. Does do some big disruptor shots. Anytime the Zerg tries to swamp over, you could see the value those disruptors gain, but by gosh, does it just not matter? Oh, actually. Oh, look at that. Still a lot of Banelings there, though. Doesn't want to get hit in a clump, and oh, man. Yeah, that's that's a good enough trade there for the Banes. Uh, that Archon goes down as well. Drops some Biles. Oh, he actually gets a Disruptor with the Biles. It's a shame that he's let that Observer sit there for so long. No Overseer on the side of Serral. Did he lose his Queens? No, he's still got the German Taxi off on the left side of the map. The Void Ray's hunting it. Transfuse the, the Taxi. Transfuse it again. Uh oh. All right, the taxi might survive, but the queens are going to go down. And he's out on the map, though. When you're out on the map, you're in danger of getting swarmed here. Mass Roach Ling Bane. Lings there do get caught by the Archon. I mean, epic play from two base for Trap. Just uh, That's a fifth base. 71 workers for Zerg. Plus two uh, melee is on the way. He's already got plus one range and plus one melee. Queen comes forward. Queen will beat that very bruised Void Ray. Nice micro from Serral. Baits out a disruptor shot. Void Ray falls. It's a two base all in effectively. A one Colossus does not have the range upgrade. Plus one attack versus one, one. But look at that. Lots of Banelings finishing up here. 14 Banelings, eight more in the way. A lot more Zerglings coming. I'd love to see Serral wrap around the left. I think he's a bit too clumped here. He really should be coming from multiple angles. He's kind of coming from one angle. And I do think that's a bad habit Serral has when he's winning in ZVP. He gets a bit lazy with his surround. As I say that, never mind. Banelings from the left that I didn't even notice. Ah, uh, he does actually take out most of these units. That Disruptor on the right goes down. A lot of the Protoss army falling. They're trying to pull back and be as efficient as they can. Prism saves the Colossus. The Stalker's trying to blink out. But like I said, I mean, when you're five base versus two, come on. <laughs> Trap fights the last bit of moment, but it's not enough. Well played by Serral. Oh, right, all right, all right. Straight into map two with Jaganatha. Uh, unfortunate. A lack of scouting in that previous game. Uh, we might go back and review it at the end of this series and do a little breakdown on some of the mistakes on both sides and kind of little areas where they tricked each other. Uh, Serral did put a few fake drones on his third mineral line in that last game, but 39 drones all in. Trap needed to get his void rays in the middle of the map to slow down the overlords, try and snipe the overlords, force the queens to unload a few times in transit. Buy time for those batteries to get up, a charge lot wave or two, an arc on or two to get warped in, and you can hang on there. But uh, coming across with a super early probe once again, this is one of his very first probes, and he's going to be able to block that base, but it is a spawning pool. A very early 12 pool for Serral. Now this map, 12 pool, you might think giant map, but because the path through the middle goes through a speed zone, speed zone, it actually ends up being only marginally longer than submarine trap comes in sees the spawning pool is like oh shit getting 12 pulled all right he's gonna have to send a probe down probably will get a second gateway a cyber core build a zealot or two some adepts and delay his nexus a long time and serral actually gets the hatch down well done oh that's very nice for serral if that probe can block the natural it can keep the lings at home a little longer it can be really annoying so well done by serral to get that hatchery down as fast as he did his lings are going to go across the map already a second gateway Oh, what an interesting wall. Oh, 
I guess he doesn't want the cyber core to get focused down at the front. Okay, fair enough. Cute. Cute little wall there. Zealot's going to be here. I mean, the, the, the weak spots are so close to the Zealot in the wall, it's hard to actually focus them down. And it's already reinforced behind. So even if you take that pylon down, you can just put one more pylon behind it. Easy wall off. So one Zealot's being chrono boosted. It's in the wall. Now, Serral here did go for 10 Zerglings, which is the standard count. And notice the probes there in reserve. So the Zealot wants to stop that gateway going down. I think another pylon behind that would also re-wall. <clears throat> so there we go. Doesn't have that Zealot or that Adept out yet. An Adept does start up. Four probes and a Zealot have been pulled. Serral here is looking for the looking for the wraparound, seeing if he can get inside the base. Ooh, gets one probe. Not bad. Traps the Depths are almost out. He's got to keep that gateway alive. It's only got 200 hit points. And these Zerglings not going to be able to get it. Oh! Oh, Serral! He actually gets a nice little wrap around there. He gets one of these Zealots. Does lose a lot of his Zerglings, though. But that's all delayed a lot of mining time. He got one worker killed. And he's got his natural up behind it. He's got a queen out. More queens on the way. That probe is going to block the third. But Trap here with such a late Nexus is actually building even a third Adept or a fourth Adept before building the Nexus. Wow. So Trap is really keen on doing counter damage. Now these Zerglings, ah, they got found. That's unfortunate for Serral. He's going to lose those two. And then the Adepts will come across the map. It's going to be four Adepts. I mean, Serral does buy time by doing this. And he's already got three Queens out. And when you defend this, what you do is your Queens come out front and they just force the shade out nice and early from the adepts and you just need enough zerglings to deal with the shade but that is four adepts coming across the map the zergling sees two more adepts Ooh, well done by serral he's even forcing one of the adepts to turn around okay this is really good serral building lots of zerglings he's got a gas on the way trap like i said needs to do damage he's onto a second gas his stargate's starting but he needs to do something here and he is starting to force a lot of lings out Serral, a bit slow with his lings to move up into the main base. That was sloppy, but Trap not taking advantage of it. Worried about getting surrounded. And he's going to start trying to fight here. The Adepts and the Zealot. Three Queens, though, more than a match for this. Fourth Adept is coming down as well. No Ling Speed or anything like that, but you don't actually need it. If you've got these Queens out front... You're okay. Now, as Serral, the problem is getting a third base up behind this. He'd love to sneak a drone over to that third. He's, he needs to build more workers as well. He does lose one creep tumor there. He's going to lose another one. Oh, well done. One adept goes down, but he gets both creep tumors. It's going to be very hard for Serral to push out. I think he might just have to take that third base on the left. Stalker damaging an overlord. Not quite going to be able to kill it. The overlord did see the stargate. Wow. Serral in the midst of this scouting sees the Stargate follow up. He does just opt for that other third base. And you know what? Good counter pressure by Trap. Ends up losing an Adept. That's totally fine. He's forced so many Lings out. It's not the direct damage. It's these 19 Zerglings that could have been drones. That could have been eight drones there. Eight or nine drones there easily. And because of that, the worker count very close and it stabilizes things. The Oracle can now join up with Ling Speed being so delayed. I mean, Trap doesn't know that. But he actually could stay on the other side of the map with the Adepts and keep pressuring for a while. But he does opt to play safely. Sero likewise, going for Overlord speed, wants to see whatever the follow-up is. And... Oracle's going to come on into the main base. Spore finishes just in time. Perfect, perfect defense by Sero. Starts the Spore in the natural as well. And he moves his Queens up to the third as his drones start moving over. Second Oracle's on the way, so that's going to create a nice, powerful run by two Oracles, of course, enough to one-shot workers. Definitely would run this probe out of there if I was uh, if I was trapped. Don't want to be throwing that probe away for no reason. Keep it hidden for a proxy later or something like that. Nice, fast third. Nexus here for Trap. Taking both gases on the natural. No extra tech until now. The Forge and the Twilight are only now on the way. All right, Oracle's just going to slow down creep spread for now. That probe will fall. He's going to go in here, but quick pull off the gas for Serral. Nice micro. Denies the oracles their opportunity. Speed Overlord's going to fly through this base, and it's going to see exactly what's up. He says, are you going to Stargate Void Ray? Because I need to know if I've got to play Hydra Bane in this game. And he sees, okay, Twilight Forge. No worries. A few gateways going down, but that's no big deal. That just only brings him up to five gateways. And, ooh, Oracles, triple Oracle dive. Oh, it's a laser fest, seven, eight worker kills. And he keeps that Reddit point Oracle alive, unless a queen can get over there. Where are the queens, man? They were off spreading creep in the middle of the map. Eight workers, very necessary damage. When you invest in three Oracles, you need to get something. 
That's a good start to things. Two queens and a spore in the main. Two queens and a spore in the natural. Two queens and a spore in the third. It's a good setup there. Six queens, a spore in each base. Cyril's still up in work. Is still looking healthy. The lings are going to come across the map. Just going to have a little bit of a poke around here. Single Zergling will go in. See a few sentries. A zealot. Some adepts. This is a fake move out for Trap, but it's more of like a vision clearing move. Keep Cyril guessing. And Cyril, he's been loving his Swarmos play lately. Is he going to do it again? Look at it. He's got a big creep schlong in the middle of the map. So if, when you've got a protrusion like that, if you can get that up near that speed zone, it's going to be a great launching pad for your Locusts. And he's just building, what is this? A Dropper Lord for the right side. So that's the Zergling minivan that he's preparing. He's been so good at constantly using that Dropper Lord to just drop eight lings at a time and just kind of sneak those into the enemy's main base, keep them busy. And then he pushes across with his queens, his roaches, and starts launching Swarmos like mad. So 70 drones, three base, that's all he needs. He'll very slowly take a fourth, but he has no intention of building more workers. It's all about take the fight to the Protoss, get in their face and F them up. Trap here with a Stalker Sentry style. Very good for mobility, but only if he can get rid of the Creep Roach push and actually control the area outside his base. If he can't do that, he's in trouble. So the Zergling Minivan's ready. The Oracles might see that. There's nothing, no flying unit to shoot it down. No Phoenix or Void Ray. And you can see continuing to protrude through the middle of the map, pushing forwards. Ten Swarm Hosts on the way. As it's a second Robo and a Robo Bay for Trap. He's building a lot of shield batteries. He's worried about a push. He's putting down some stasis traps. A good idea. Zergling Minivan sneaking around the right side of the map. Trap does have spotting pylons, but does he notice it? You're going to see on Trap's mini map, it comes in right now. And he sees it. He sees it. Okay, he warps in a Stalker. Running around in the middle of the map. Stalkers should be able to deal with that. It's going to blink over and damage that. Zergling's quick to evacuate, though. The minivan does drive them away. Here we go. We've got some swarm hosts here. Queens, roaches, ravages. He's got to just throw the locusts, I think. Good engagement by Trap here. He's looking to engage early. He says, throw the locusts, man. You've got to throw the locusts. Serral, though. Mad trigger discipline. Look at it. He waits until they're clumped up, and then he only throws a few. He only throws a few. He wants to get his swarm hosts over here so they can launch into the main mineral line. Oh, great play here from Serral. The Locusts do finally engage on the front. Remember, they're giant damage dealers. Stasis traps leading into the natural as well. But look at that. He's going to launch into the main. That's like six swarm hosts worth. You're going to see him hopefully micro those, but he doesn't. Oh, okay. One of them lands on the pylon. Okay, wow. Roaches and Ravages going to start to jump on top. The Locusts go for the natural. The Stasis trap is perfect. The Immortal, the Stalkers holding in the wall. More Stalkers and Sentries there. They can always fall back to the batteries on the left, but there's no more batteries in the natural. Once that wall's down, Trap is in trouble. The Queens are going to try and defend. There's only three Oracles. The Queens can overpower that. They pull back from the wall and they drop Transfusers. The Oracles are just dropping like flies. All three Oracles go down. And the next wave of Locust is here. The Roach Ravager onslaught on the third base. Trap unable to get his Colossus out. He's got two Colossus about to pop. But I don't even think that's the unit you want. They're good versus the Locust. They're bad versus everything else. That Colossus dies almost immediately. The Stork is desperately fighting on all sides. But once again, Serral here with a great opening and a fantastic finish. He's got the Queen Roach Ravager Swarmos. He has been making this strategy look imbalanced. He absolutely squished Showtime in the group stage with this, and he's showing its power once again. I mean, it was not Showtime being bad at the game, guys. I actually think Showtime put up a little bit of a better fight than Trap did in this one. It's just Serral is so good at pushing forward. Even that 12 pool opening, keeping the pressure on his opponent, messing him up a little bit. And the follow-up is just brutal. Trap may have a decent economy up on three base. The fact that the Swarm Host is so close and continuing to launch into his main, into his natural, that's a disaster. It's an absolute disaster. He cleans up the roaches there, but another wave of locusts coming. And look at that. That natural mineral line's in trouble. Stalkers just don't have the damage output, man. The locusts actually threaten that army, but he says, no, nope, go for it. He goes for the worker line. He could even click on the Nexus right now. I think that would be highest value. He does click on the Nexus, but a little bit late. I don't think he's going to confirm the kill. You're kidding me! Three hit point Nexus survives in the main. Trap scrambling to defend. He's trying to do everything he can, but Stork is getting caught out. The cannon is trying to hang on. There's more units running in the front. More roaches, more lings. Just constant onslaught here from Serral. I'd love to see him hold position those and just fight the probes. He finishes the Nexus with this Roach run by, runs over to the third base, takes out a battery, and then he's just going to slip on away, I believe. Doesn't quite have enough Roaches to fight that. Not for now. He's just going to pull on back. Stalkers do punish him a little on the retreat, but look at that. This Locust Wave is going to take out the main base. He's going to put Trap back to one base 
and he's opting for lurkers behind it. Serral is the best defensive unit tech on the game. Trap needs to go right now with this army because look at that. He's going to lose the Nexus. It goes down barely just as the Locust Slives expire. And here we go. A desperate push. A Disruptor, two Colossi, 15 Stalkers, and one Zealot. One very brave non charged Zealot. But Roach Ravager is here in numbers. The Swarm Hosts are coming home as well. He's got to watch out for the Disruptor Shot. Disruptor Shot Forages finds nothing. The Roaches and the Ravagers coming forward. Those Swarm Hosts are almost ready. Disruptor's gone. Colossus gone. Colossus gone. Colossus goes down. And as the final Colossus goes down, I mean, that is just a beautiful engage there for Serral. Shh, clicks on the Disruptor, gets on the Stalkers. And once again, he makes this strategy look so bloody one-sided, man. So bloody one-sided. My bacon is greasy after these exciting games. Serral already with a 2-0 lead. Oh, right, all right, all right. Hello, everybody. It's the next game. Let's get that scoreboard updated. So that is... Oh, man, that's 2-0 already. So Serral is just killing it. Trap uh, needs to get his feet underneath him, man. He gets taken out by a big all in game one. Game two is a brutal three base. Queen Roach Ravager. I don't know. What do you call that? Like uh, it's, it's like a Swarmhurst launching pad. Like the Queens, the Roaches, and the Ravagers are just there. They can't kill you or overwhelm you, but they just need to secure that area outside your base so the swarm host can be super brutal. And Serral with some fantastic locust control did that to perfection. Serral's going to hide a drone. He's going to go for a third base. Oh, third base first. He's not even trying to go for the natural. He actually could have got it up. He just assumed it was going to get blocked. And was like, eh, let's just hit, have the third start right on time. Because he assumed that if he waited for the minerals, he'd be like, ah, oh, and then he'd be a few seconds late on his hatchery. And trap here. We'll see no spawning pool. Oh, look at that. Big brain scouting. I didn't even realize you could scout that from the high ground. Oh, trap. You handsome man. Teaching me new things every day. I should have known that. And the probe here going to be as annoying as possible. You'll notice he tries to occupy the minerals for a few moments just to mess up the mining. Serral has to micro that drone back onto the patch to make sure they stay doubled up. The Nexus is down behind this. Cybercore will be going down next. Of course, very standard Protoss first Zerg opening. Pause on probes on 20. Drop a Nexus, drop a Cybercore. Then you resume your probes. We'll see another probe start up. 21 gas and then 22 pylon. Let's see that probe pull over. Now, I really want to see him hide his tech. I was very critical of Trap in map one for not hiding his tech. Map two, Serral also scouted his tech. Do not underestimate. It's still a pretty shit position there. I really feel, put it all the way back here or even better back behind your mineral line. You'll never see it. But look at Serral's scouting, guys. This overlord of his is clicked straight into the main because he knows people aren't building Stalker first. They're not denying his Overlord and they're just putting their tech out here in the middle. What's the bet? Trap drops a Stargate right there in its face. Well, for once, he's actually going to go for a Stalker and Serral is actually going to play it safe with the Overlord on this bigger map. Wow. Freaking game sense? What the hell, man? The one game where Serral's Overlord doesn't go in to scout the tech is the one game where there's a Stalker first. Well played by Serral. Does he see the Stalker pot? Does he look at it? Stalker just popped out. Don't think he's looking at the front. Okay, he just looked at the front. He sees the Stalker. So he's got his Zergling there, which he's going to try to run in since he just saw the Stalker leave. I think he will try to run it in. And he does. You can see he's injecting there. He's got his third hatchery on the way. And Adept's about to pop, but he gets in there just before. The Stalker's coming back. He's like, oi! Oi! But scouting denied. This is a much better situation for Trap. Serral does not know what the tech is. Yes, the Stargate's still in a silly position, in my opinion, where it's easily scoutable, but he actually put the Stalker out first to, de to, to deny the Overlord. So if the Overlord went through, would it have seen the, star the Stargate? Yes, it would have, but it would have at least cost him the Overlord. Whereas if he hid the Stargate back here, the Stalker could have denied it. So in my opinion, a little bit of a silly placement still from Trap, but nonetheless, he's hidden his opening so far. Uh, is going Void Ray first, though. And Void Ray, I mean, we've seen the Void Ray 6, Void Ray 2 Stargate build look really good on this map. I'm not always sure. I'm not always sure about it. I, I feel like Serral is one of the better Hydra Bane players at cracking through, but it's such a good defensive map that maybe Trap is just going to show us another level of finesse. So we've got one worker on gas. Void Ray does come out and show itself. And I actually feel like this is like your favorite thing. If your scouting's been denied as a Zerg, you haven't gone Overlord speed. Seeing a Void Ray puts a smile on my face. 
because immediately you know the rough range of what's happening. You see a third Nexus now, you're like, cool, I don't have to worry about any ground assaults. I just need to try and double check if there's an Oracle behind it. And it looks like he's happy to just blindly prepare his Serral. He's going to build a Spore in every base just to make sure he's safe against any Oracle follow-up. And he'll also leave a few Lings around. So he does actually even see that just for a moment. Not sure if he noticed it. Roachron goes down for safety behind this, just droning as much as he can. Zergling confirms the third base is there. So he's no Adepts on that base, so he's going to come in and might even get a probe. Ah, the Adepts just barely save it. Look at that micro, though. Serral, dude. Who bothers to save a Ling in that position? Anyone else would have just shift-clicked the Ling on the probe and then to run away only after it kills it, and it would have died. But Serral, that attention to detail, man, his Zerglings, it's irrita... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, it's irritating to play against because he, he just has such a good ability to save it. Voidray comes in and gets its second Overlord of the game, but it takes a, a price for that. It does get its paint chipped off a fair bit. Double Voidray production. Not a big surprise on this map. So common here on Romanticide. Hasn't seen extra Voidrays yet. He's going to see a Stalker in the wall, only two Adepts in the third. This is looking like a double Stargate build just because there's no extra Gateway units around. Where's the sentries? Where's the extra zealots that are being warped in, ready for charge to finish? And uh, as he sees an extra Void Ray on the map, it'll confirm it for him. For now, it is only the orange hit point Void Ray. It's actually picking off Overlords. But the other one does pick off a Ling, so definitely has shown the second Void Ray at this point. Only four Void Rays straight into Forge and Twilight. I think it seems crazy to build a second Stargate if you're only going to build four. I feel like you should always make at least six if you're doing that. Oh, Serral just started the Spire. Where is that? Can he see it? Oh, did you guys see that shit? Holy crap. Serral just pulled a drone off the head revelation, ran it over, and then ran it back on minerals. He purposely showed the Spire to Trap so that when Trap looks back at his minimap, he goes, oh shit, there's a Spire building in there. Dude, Serral is playing mind games right now. He's like, hey, look, buddy, I've got, a, I've got, I've got an infestation pit and a Spire. Which one am I going to use? And I don't think he spotted the infestation. So he's only seen the Spire. Ooh, and he's building more Void Rays. He's going into charge. He's following that normal path, but more Queens on the way. I think Serral... What? Is he, is he, is he just going to do the same Roach Swarm host push? I feel like he is, but he doesn't have a good launching pad for Creep. And now he's building 10 more drones. Ooh, okay, Serral can't make up his mind. Serral's decided to play a longer game. He's not going to go for a hard timing this time. Uh, so he needs a Baneling Nest, and he needs a Hydroden, dude. I, he is not comfortable playing Ravager Bane against this style normally. He's going to try to use Queens as the anti-air and play Roach Bane. And he's going to squeeze out five Muters. I can't get behind this, guys. Two Adepts Shade in, pick off three drones before going down. The, the five Mutalisks, that's not even a big surprise. If you go 12 and you fly into a Mineral Line by surprise, that's cool. But you've already shown it. I mean, what is the five Muters even for? Is he going to try and mass air? I don't think he's got quick enough gases on this base. I guess if he takes the rich base gas as well, gets enough economy lead, you can play a, a Sky, you know, Muta Corruptor style, but it relies on momentum because you know they're always going into Zealot Archon and you're not going to be able to deal with that with just Lings, right? Okay, this is interesting. What does Serral commit to? Corruptors? Oh, no. Oh, I, I mean, I, I told you guys earlier in this series, I'm going to be looking at Trap versus Solar and some of the mistakes he made. Making Corruptors versus this is literally one of the worst things. This is what the Taiwanese Zergs kept doing against Hassan. Nice for weeks on end. It was one of the most disappointing seasons of the Dream Act Masters that I cast in the last year was Taiwanese Zergs just trying to beat Mass Void Ray with Corruptor Queen. The problem is, not only is it so hard to beat, but what are you going to do to deal with the ground? He's got nothing. He's just trying to win with Mass Queen right now. A basic Zealot Arc on Void Ray attack. Trap's like, where are your units, bro? What the hell? Serral's like, shit, man. I, ah, I was hoping to trick you. Yes, the Muters fly in the main. They manage to sneak their way around. They get six probes, and then they die. Back at home, he's absolutely routed. He's dead. Corrupt is a terrible decision for Serral made absolutely no sense that was a, an appalling choice an appalling choice and i get it i've been there in those games where i'm like oh i don't think infestors and swarm hosts will work i don't think muters will work and you get caught between two things but i got to be very very critical of that game because <laughs> you saw the zealots and archons on the other side of the map with your zerglings you didn't build roaches and you built corruptors which are just useless in that scenario they're good for pissing on nexus and nothing else 
So the Queens were more than enough to beat the Void Rays, and they were so tanky. If he just had a bunch of Ravages or Banelings with that, then it would have been fine, right? He was playing this weird style where the Queens were his anti-air, but you've got to have a good enough ground army as well. And I understand you don't want to max on Ravager Corrupted Bane, but sometimes you got to do it. Ah, oh, well, let's see what happens in the next game. Trap gets one on the board. All right, all right, all right. It's time for map number four down here in the bottom right-hand side in the blue. The Zerg player. It is Serral. His opponent up here in the top left, finally getting a point on the board. Nice Void Ray build. It's Trap. And I think Trap's probably got a grin on his face, like, lol, I wasn't meant to win the game with that attack, but he just had no units. Serral definitely getting his wires crossed a little bit there. Felt like he, he didn't quite realize, I think, that it was a heavy Void Ray opening. Serral tends to enjoy going Hydra Bane against that. That was his uh, his response against Showtime on uh, Jagannatha when they played, and it's, it's what he prefers to do. Oh, Serral blocked. Does drop a spawning pool immediately. And goes out to pretend to take a third base. Now he wants to come back and take that base. Serral does not like that base getting blocked. This Overlord should be moving there. Uh, Serral, why is that Overlord not moving down there, dude? This is bad Overlord placement by Serral, in my opinion. He sees the probe go back there, so he's just going to move down and take the third. Uh, maybe he's trying to hide the Overlord, and he, I guess there he sees it. He could see the probe move down. I feel like the Overlord should just move out the middle. Maybe he's worried that Trap will see the Overlord and avoid its vision. Nonetheless, Hatchery gets down on time. Not too bad for Serral. And we do see second gateway. Trap thought he was being 12 pulled. Oh, the hiding of the drone paid off there. Trap thought he was being 12 pulled. It wasn't until he came in and saw the gas and pool. He said, oh, no, 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 this is, this is just a pool first. Cancels his second gateway, but actually that's really dangerous. If Serral were to build six slings here, he could have done damage. But I guess the probe saw that there was only drones popping out and it saw that there was only one lava available when the pool finished. So good scouting by that probe. If there was a few lava sitting around, you need to go Cybercore before Nexus because this is not a big map. And those lings will get in and you won't have anything. Like with this build, you'll have a zealot and no wall off. Six lings can kill that zealot or run straight past and be very annoying in the main. So, uh, I mean, a good a good pivot from Trap, good scouting. So he doesn't end up building the, the wall off, but it definitely slows down his opening a little bit. Just Serral tricking him. And these two lings are going to try and sneak in the main, which have a very good chance of getting in. They just run straight across the map. The zealot did get cancelled, by the way. Trap said, ah, we probably don't need that. And where's your tech at, is what Serral's going to say. Now, unfortunately, why does he not go in the main? Oof. Bit of a mistake there. Two lings chasing that probe as well. He's going to see the pylon. He says, well, I kind of tricked you, so I guess your tech just goes down late now. And now Trap is going to consider putting the tech there, but I think he's just going to wait until he cleans up the lings and then pop the tech down over there. Second gateway in the wall. Trap's trying to hide things, but that means Serral has got a big delay on the tech, and he confirms it. Oh, look at the way he splits the Zerglings, man. Dude, your tech's meant to be down no later than about 2.30 with most Protoss versus Zerg openings. Most Protoss expand tech openings anyway. Instead, his Stargate goes down at three minutes. Oh, guys, this is this is a garbage tier of Stargate timing. The only thing going for it is that he's hidden the scouting and he's got two Adepts out nice and early. But even there behind it, a shield battery, he's worried about being all in. Serral's got no thoughts of all inning. He's building a couple of Zerglings to finish with his quick Ling speed, which of course will surround those Adepts if they come across the map, which once, once again means Trap, if he goes across the map, he's in trouble. He sends a probe because he can't risk losing his Adepts. I actually think this is a great opening for Serral. He's got to go kill that. His Queen's going to intercept. He wants to hide the Zerglings. Yeah, Trap's probe goes down, doesn't see Jack. And the Adepts are going to come out now. Plenty of Zerglings, though. If they if they catch wind of where those Adepts are, they could be really effective. Lings are going across the map. Shield Battery and Stalker should defend the wall, though. And that means these Lings are out of position right now. Not the best for Serral. Those two Adepts could punish him. Behind this, Oracle first on the way for Trap. Serral getting some spores up nice and early. One in the main, though, at least. He's already got four Queens out. Some good creep spread. I like the way his Lings are kind of looking around for these Adepts. He's finally going to see them. Oh, those Adepts, four of them. But two, two going to get surrounded real quick, man. Ah, the other two Adepts are backing him up, though. Actually, I think that's a fine trade for Trap. Nicely done. Yeah, loses one Adept, but takes out a whole bunch of Zerglings. Oracle's here as well. And the Queens and Zerglings going to pull back. And that's a very fast Roachhorn. So I think Serral there, that's the, that's the power of denying the scouting from Trap. Is Serral built a really quick Roachhorn because he didn't actually know what was coming his way. 
built a safety spore in the main earlier than was needed as well. Spore does go down in the natural. Those adepts do shade on into that base. Ooh, nice split focus fire there. Well done. Six drone kills. Damn, that's juicy for this early on. That's really juicy, guys. The tech is pretty late behind it. This was not free for trap, but Serral is like, I reckon, I reckon there was a bit of a twitch on the camera. No doubt. Uh, sitting there in his room, maybe a tussle of the hair, a little bit of a frustration. You can always tell when Serral takes a bit more damage than he'd like, but he gets a bit, bit worked up, a little bit angry. And also a lot more focused. It's not a it's not an out of control rage, it's a focused, kind of slow burning anger that he channels into playing better. Oh, Miss Micro from Trap. The Oracle derps forward the low hit point one. And he loses it for just one drone. Charges on the way, as well as the Templar Archives. A lot of gateways going down, so it's six gates before third base. And Serral even snipes the probe moving out for the third. Oh, he's even going to get the Zealots. The Oracle will try to make him pay a tax for that, at least. Does lose a few Zerglings, but many of them pull back low on life, ready to regenerate. The Oracle just going to drain all of its energy, saying, Get out of here, and don't come back, you dirty Zerglings. Stay off my property. Tramp's Prism there, looking for an opening. Zealots, get back in the wall. And another Zergling. Oh, another Zergling snipe on the probe. Almost went down. It's up to eight gateways now. It's basically a two-base charge at Arkham all in. But Serral here stopping at 53, 55 drones and just massing roaches. He's making roach speed plus one range. And that's perfect. Against the Zealot Archon attack, you just need enough que uh, queens and roaches. The queens will defend the oracle. They'll damage and threaten the prism. They'll drop some transfusers and whatnot as well. And those roaches, if that roach count gets high enough, Serral's looking good. He's already building extra overlord, so he won't be supply blocked. Gets the probe. Good trigger discipline on the oracle. He's waiting for Serral to commit before he turns it on. Ends up costing him both Zealots. Now the Archon drop has come in. He's going to try to sneak some extra Zealot warpins, but dude, I mean, Trap is definitely committing to a two base all-in. He's got an Immortal. He's warping in more Zealots at home. He's trying to deny Serral's vision. The Oracle is going to pick off all those Lings, which is important. The Archon's looking for damage. They're going to get a Queen finally. But they need to pull back and it's time to go. Trap's got to pull the trigger. He's not building any probes. Unfortunately for him, I think Serral has the perfect read on the situation. Look at this spine crawler behind the mineral. Really hard for Zealots to kill that because they're going to attack and attack through the choke point. He's actually moving across as well. He's doing a Queen Roach Ravager. He's actually the one who's being offensive. Archon drop in the main could cause him troubles, but that's a lot of roaches. Now, Roach Speed's not quite finished. And the Archon in the main. He warps in Zealots. That might be an overcommittal from Trap. Trap thinks he's the one being the aggressor, but Serral has a huge Roach count. They might not be all here in the main. Oh, look at that, though. He's going to get a lot of drones in the main base. There's not many roaches here right now. Serral's trying to hang on. At the front, Queen's getting overwhelmed as well. Serral does bring back a big pack of Roach Ravagers. So that should be enough units to clean up the main. Oh, the Archons are dropping on top, though. At the front of the map, though, Serral does rout him. Pushes him back there. And does he manage to catch? Okay, he defends the main. And he's looking for the Archons and Immortals. He wants to kill them. He knows there's no Prism. He knows he can kill these units. The Immortal Barrier's gone. And that Immortal's going to be going down. Well played by Serral. The Archon drop from Trap, desperately trying to keep him back, but those Archons are completely out of shields. The Roaches are on the third base. Trap's going to try and recall the Archons down. The Oracle doing damage. The Zealot's getting on top of them. The Roaches cannot finish the base off, but they snag an Archon and they focus fire. The Zealot goes down. Another Zealot. Another Zealot focused down. More Roaches and Ravages and Lings coming across the map, and there's no flying units left. The Oracle is out of juice. It's out of energy. The Roaches are going to be able to take down these Zealots. There's just not enough. Trap warps in sentries. He starts a Robo Bay, which I feel like at this point is almost the tech that he goes for when he knows he's lost a game. Trap's like, well, maybe if I make a Disruptor, I can get the biggest shot of my life and win this game. It's not, it's not bad thinking from Trap. It's just not going to work. Well played by Sarah right from the opening. Some really good details with his, his, his kind of scouting denial. His units getting in there. And uh, I think right from the start, getting that nice little bit of a lead by delaying the tech. Even though Trap did a bit of damage to him, Serral read the play fantastically, kept sniping the probe trying to take that third base, and he adjusted to it. He said, look, I don't need a lot of workers, just 53 drones, not even a full mineral line on the third. We're just going to make Roach Ravager and take you to Serral Town. That's a 3-1 lead for the finisher. All right, all right, all right. It's time for game five, and he's on his last life. He better step up big because he is just getting trounced. That early game in the last map, he got tricked. It did not go well for him. In the top left, it is Trap. 
Now you notice he pauses probe production to go for a 13 pylon, not 14, so we can send the probe right across the map, both build the pylon and block the enemy's expansion. Some of the bigger maps, he would actually send a probe across even earlier and then just do a normal 14 pylon behind it. But in this scenario, you can see adjusting the build order to try and get the block down. Now, Cyril, he knows that he loves this. The Overlord sees the probe coming, but that's a 15 hatch. And Cyril, man, this is so smart. I love that Cyril's going for a 15 hatch. I feel like if you know they're so obsessed with blocking your hatchery, this is always going to get you ahead. Cyril here, once again, with a good opening. And I feel like this is almost where Cyril wins a lot of his games. Like, people sometimes... It, it gives me, you know, so many moments of, of just being annoyed when people complain about Zerg being in when they watch Sarah winning. Because I'm like, the number of tiny details he does, like right down to just managing this early game so well, uh, his scouting, his little tricks that he does, it's so much that he does to get an advantage early on. And it's just that he doesn't give up advantages. You know, Scarlet used to have this sort of aura about her for a period in, say, 2014 where she felt unstoppable in maybe 2013, 2014, somewhere around there, where it was like, if she got a lead, there was no way. Like, she was, if she got even a small lead, she was never going to give that away, man. Um, and I think I think Cyril has the, the same thing on an even more powerful level, to, you know, more consistent even than Scarlet ever was in, in her, you know, most successful day. Now, is Trap finally going to listen to me shouting about his tech needs to be hidden? So because the Overlord often comes in and scouts this area, yeah, you can hide the tech there. I still, I mean, so the advantage of this pylon is it gets a lot of production space. You can build a lot of buildings around it. You can still tuck your tech in kind of far. Just part of me wishes he'd do a patience. Like patience will always build the star, like the pylon here and just build the stargate like back there or something like that where no one ever checks or he'll build it like pylon here, stargate here. You know, one of these sort of things could be so damned good. And we'll see what Sarah does because... On this map, the pillar's all the way over there. So he's going to move over here. Okay. So he's playing it safe. I think he, I think after the early games where he kept spouting, scouting the Stargate, Cyril's being a little more conservative. Now he sees the Adept come out. Clears up that pylon block. Interesting that Trap would opt for that. Delays the hatchery by only a few seconds. This Overlord just chilling for now. Single Zergling is going to try and sneak in. But the Adept is waiting on the ramp. Trap playing the Information Denial version of the opening nice moves by trap always love when they do that pretend to shade past the overlord and run backwards and then just cancel the shade it's a good little mind game and does keep Cyril in the dark which Cyril not wanting to go overlord speed in this matchup he doesn't want to cop that loss early because the oracles and the adepts are so successful at doing damage to him he wants every worker out that he can get now he sees two adepts and it looks like he is going to scout but he's clicking through the back so he wants to get to safety, but that's not going to see the tech. Ooh, that Stalker's going to be out soon. I think he's both not going to see the tech and lose the Overlord. About time we saw Trap's opening start to go better for him. Hiding the Stargate being a little bit trickier with the opening. And Cyril has got to be a little annoyed at that. The Oracle's already out. Just about to pop. And that Overlord, Cyril's going to be like, dude, where is it? Oh, he's busy at home though. The Adepts come in, snipe two workers. That's totally fine for Serral. He comes down, and he does see the Stargate, and he sees a Void Ray building. Okay, so he doesn't know about the Oracle on the map, but knowing him, he'll still take some safety precautions. Oh, he might think it's only Void Rays. This Oracle could find big damage. There's nothing on the natural. Okay, one Queen pops, but even one Queen, that Oracle could do good damage. Oh, he saw it with the Overlord, though. Well done. Good movement here. Good movement. That Queen in the main should be able to defend as well. Spores are now going down. And the Oracle's going to come back in, but it'll take a lot of damage. Ooh, Serral not pulling his drones away. He's going to lose two drones. Oh, three. So greedy from Trap. Let's try to get out of there. That Quaid, if Serral runs it, he can get it. Oh, he just misses the Oracle. Trap once again getting some small openings. Like I said, finally finding that value. And the previous game he won was with a double Stargate Void Ray opening. And for some reason, Serral didn't play Hydra Bane against it. Now... Once again, Serral goes for a reasonably fast Roach Warren, this time about 4 minutes 40, 4.35. But I kind of wonder about that. Like, I want to see him not use that Roach Warren at all. He's seen a quick third. I really feel there's no need to go a safety Roach Warren. If you see an Oracle, a Void Ray, and a super fast third Nexus, 
I mean, what more do you need to see? Technically, they could do like a seven minute glaive adapt timing. By that time, you could defend it with bloody Hydra Ling. Or if you really want, you can have a Bane Ling Nest for safety. So, Serral does at least have some more Ling Spotters out. The Oracle coming in, picking off more Creep Tumors very nicely. Evo Chamber is on the way. And remember, we don't want to see Serral do what he did on Romanticide. That seemed like a really confused response to a Void Ray opening. Has Serral actually figured out what's going on? He's building Roach Speed. Oh, Serral doesn't know what he's up against. There's no Hydroden going down. Serral does not know what he's up against. He's taking a fourth in a location where it's easily snipeable. I mean, either fourth is kind of rough on this map. This map's amazing for Void Ray Harass, but we're on Serral's camera. He doesn't, he doesn't know what's going on. I really feel like he should by this point. His Lings have spotted more Void Rays coming. He's building three more Queens. Uh, queens are the answer to a small amount of Void Rays, but not if they just keep getting built. And definitely not going to be very good in terms of mobility. Oracle in the main does go down. Overseer dies as well. Lings are looking to snake across the map and deny a fourth. Maybe look for a run by that natural potential opportunity to break through that Stalker. Hydrodent's on the way now. Baneling Nest goes down. Okay, so it looks like he's going to swap into Hydra Bane, but he did cancel Roach Speed. Okay, finally, Serral gets the read that he's needed this whole time. I do think Hydra Bane, one of the best ways to play here. He's deflected these early Void Rays. I think going into the main is their better angle, but four queens and a spore there, three queens and a spore here. Great setup by Serral. Lots of gateways going down, of course. Charge plus one. Templar Archives is going to be finishing up momentarily as well. That's it right there. And there's just six Void Rays up into a fourth base. Now, Serral's Hydrotech's going to be ridiculously slow. So he's droning pretty hard, and I think that's the right way to do this. This Oracle oh, being such a nuisance. Well played by Trap. If he can just keep this alive for yet another wave, he's, he's really punishing Serral for skipping the spores. Now, if Serral doesn't build spores, he's going to get in even more trouble. He really needs to build another spore there and there, or leave an extra queen there off control group. Otherwise, that Oracle will find more damage later on. Psy Storm on the way nice and early. We've already got High Templar gathering energy for that. Bane Speed's on the way. Melee range. So he's got double upgrades. A bit of an awkward choke point in and out of his own base. And Muscular Augments as well as Groove Spines queued up. So we're going to see Hydra Bane up against Charge Up Immortal Archon Storm. Now, very low Immortal count with this style from the Protoss. So there are times where you can uh, go into Ultras off this pretty rare scenario that's going to be much further down the line just something to keep your eyes open for that oracle has been the bane of serral it finally falls rebuilding those workers he's up on 84 i'd love to see him take a fifth base as he starts to crack on through don't be blowing those banelings up on that okay they just had move commands now on this map breaking up that ramp that ramp and through here near impossible I'm surprised there's not a High Templar over here, but already cannons, battery, zealots everywhere. So what Trap's going to try and do is just defend with Psy Storm, send a few zealot backstabs across, and he's going to go straight for Sky Toss behind this, I believe. He's going to force that late game. It's a sort of scenario which Serral has not looked comfortable in. Uh, against Showtime, when he played Hydra Bane versus Void Ray opening, he tried to smash the fourth. He, he did not have a quick infestation pit or hive on the way. He was really committing to the Hydra Bane, and I think he's doing it again here. So 10 Banelings, 14 more on the way. That's going to be 25 Banelings and about 25 Hydralisks. His upgrades aren't all quite there just yet. If he can find a little bit of an opening, that's good, but he's got to be real careful of that Psy Storm. Ooh, okay, gets a High Templar. Banelings, though, not really finding the mark. He's trying to spread. Ooh, no, no, he took he took too, too much storm. He's got to pull out now, I think. Oh, he wants to take out those Void Rays. He's baiting a lot of storms. There's not many Psy Storms left. There's none. No Psy Storms left. He might be able to actually do this. The Banelings, ooh, they find the Zealots. They force the High Templars to morph. But no support left over. He's got to be careful. He can't be losing those Hydras. The Lings look like they can get that High Templar, though. Ooh, very nice. If you can get rid of the Void Rays, that would be huge. Good micro by Trap, though. Overall, a fantastic trade for Trap. Took out about 10 Hydralisks and a lot of Banelings. So 11 Hydras, 60 Zerglings, 19 Banes. What, a couple of High Templar and Archon, a few Zealots and Cannons. Not a big deal there for, for Trap to be losing that. And he starts three more Stargates and a Fleet Beacon. And most importantly, holy shit, Trap is like the first Protoss who's not a giant noob from this situation. He actually remembers to start plus one on his fire attacks. The most important upgrade for this scenario. Serral's trying to headbutt through here. 
Got to avoid those side storms. Oh, a juicy storm. Juicy Lucy. The trap comes in with Zealots on the right side at the same time. If he can weather this, he'll be good. Bailing's not quite finding all those workers just yet. The Hydra line's still looking really powerful, though. Those Void Rays. How are those Void Rays still alive? The battery overcharge just not letting any of them die. And oh my god, he's getting routed. Serral's getting overrun. A storm comes on top of the Hydras, and he loses all of his Hydras. You are not meant to lose your Hydras in those, in those fights. The moment you lose your Hydras like that, without doing catastrophic economic damage, you are in a terrible situation. 80 probes versus 77. Carriers are on the way, and he's just stuck trying to remax on Hydra Bane, losing the fifth base. If he had 90 workers, maybe. I'd be like, oh, I guess it's not too bad. But look, the Void Rays have survived all game long. They have been obscenely efficient. Part of me wonders if Serral should have been coming in from multiple ramps and angles. I really do think he should have been working up that ramp as well. I think only working one angle, he was just a bit too cramped and took a bit too much size storm damage. Only plus one melee still. Still cannot be one-shotting probes. Starting a hive now. More hydras. I'd love to see him do plus two melee. Four cannons, two shield batteries. That's the sort of base which you can only really attack with like... 15 Banelings? I would say 15 Banelings and a few Hydras as well. Banelings alone aren't going to crack that. I, I don't even think... I think you need more Zerglings if you really want to do that. If he just rallies those in, that's a terrible idea. Because there's nothing else going on right now, and he's already showed that he wants to attack that angle. So we should chill out for the moment. Serral needs to back off. Don't be rolling those in on their own. That's a bad move. Really easy for Trap to just warp in a few more units there. And terrible trade for Serral. He can't afford that. This is not good. That, that was not a great attack from Serral. I mean, he's in a bad position, but I don't know. Bane, Baneling drops? Maybe he could find a way in. Maybe just wait till he takes a fifth base and be a little more patient. Oh, he's a bit clumped. The Hydra's taking some big Psy Storms. I don't know if he has enough Hydra's to overwhelm this many Interceptors. The Ling Bane on the ground should beat the High Templar. Oh, look at that, though. The Interceptor count does get whittled down, but all the High Templars survive, turn into Archons. Yes, he's out of Psy Storm at this moment. But how do you ever roll through that army? He's going to try and roll cannons, uh, Banelings up again. He needs to find the probe line, he feels. But these fights are just so damned inefficient. And look at that, warping in a zealot to slow things down. A sentry as well. The probes pull back. These are really efficient trades. Look at that. Double the cost efficiency from Trap. He's building three infestors is Serral. So he's going to try and fungal the interceptors and use microbial shroud, I believe, to deal with them. Um, it's not a terrible way of doing it, but yeah, now now Trap does have a really good counter push timing, and I think Serral needed to wait for Trap to step out a bit. He spent so much money on static on his four base. If Serral split his army in two sides a little bit more in this game, I think he, he would have been able to find a way in, especially now as Trap pushes on the map. Imagine if you swing in with backstabs at this moment when he's not just camping at home. That base is wide open now, but Serral's kind of gone, oh, well, the attacks aren't working. Let's give up on it. He's trying to get up spores. He's trying to still just build drones even at this point. It's way too late in the game to be building drones. It means the Protoss army is just way bigger than his 20 more army supply. Serral's not even maxed right now. He's trying to get infestors. He's trying to add a lurker den. He needs to desperately buy time. These Zerglings hopefully can pull him home. But that might actually just pull the trigger. Trap might be like, yeah, you're trying to pull me away, aren't you? He might just commit into this. The Zerglings aren't even continuing in with their assault. The Queen's coming forward. Oh, he doesn't have energy for Microbial Shroud yet. Okay, yes, he does. Finally throws one down, but a bit too late. He got the energy just a little too late. If only he could have got that on those queens. Then maybe, just maybe, but I, I got to be very critical. Let's go back. We're trying to do some little mini analyses during these. That first Hydra Bane Assault, not only was he slow to realize that it was Stargates and get into Hydra Bane, when he does this first assault, it is a one-directional oomph. He's just trying to his way through. This ramp was open. It was another area where he could have created trouble. Now, I'm okay with him maybe going just for this ramp at first, but I feel like he's got to work some units in there at some point to try and take advantage of this situation. And honestly, great cannon battery count. It's a fantastic map for it. Traps played very stat style, just massing all of that sort of stuff. And those Banelings needed to keep trying to work their way into that mineral line, in my opinion. But imagine if Banelings were coming in from behind at this point, right? Imagine if a few Hydras, 10 Banes come in from behind. Yes, technically there's some Psy Storm there. I just don't think this is enough area for him to really work because he doesn't have a lot of room to spread his units against the Storm, but he also 
anytime he wants to close with the units, he's got to force his army through tiny choke points. So it's naturally going to favor Protossing, uh, you know, winning out these engagements. The Void Rays never should have been able to survive this long. Like, this was just madness. So Serral takes some awful engagements in this map, a bit too over eager to break through. And I think it was not the worst thing in the world where maybe he could have done this. But the second trade, he gets way too deep, right? And that Zealot run down. So he gets way too deep with this trade in this one. Takes a terrible storm on the left. So the problem is, once you lose your Ling Bane, Zealots can just annihilate your Hydras. Archons are hard to deal with. And this kind of happens here, where he needed to get the hell out now. I think if he left now, he maybe could have been okay. But he doesn't. More Zealots are warping in. And starts just getting routed. Loses the fifth as well. It's a really good map for Trap Style, for just defending, setting up those cannons, those batteries, those layered storms. Maybe Baneling drops in the, in the back of the base, maybe working a new angle. It felt like the one directional push was just not going to work against someone as good as Trap. All right, he's letting his opponent get another point on the board in that last one. Wasn't able to crack through but he's still got two chances to seal the deal. Down here in the bottom right, in the blue, going for a 12-pool opening. It is Serral! Up here in the top left, once again, gonna go and try and block the expansion, as he loves to do. It is none other than Trap. And just flawless defensive play with the, the cannons and the storms, the batteries layered backwards, uh, Archons, the Zealot run by coming in after defending that first attack. That was fantastic play from Trap. Really impressed with how he did that. Uh, it's really hard. When you're down 3-1, man, especially the way those first two games went, oh, it's hard to fight back. Now, this time around, he's like, oh, should I scout for a 12 pool? And he's like, oh, but check, there's no drone down here, man. So he's, he's looking around. He's a little nervous. He's like, don't want to let him get the hatchery up. He's going to come on in. And he sees lava, which already tells him that it's a 12 pool. Spots the pool as well, confirms it. You can see there, he's going to come down with his probe. He's going to wall off. Curious to see what wall off he does. Okay, so second gate there, core there. And he's going to go for the pylon block. I like it. Wasn't able to get that down against Cyril and Jagannatha. This time around, Cyril's going to be like, ah, oh, man. Now, does he stop to kill the pylon? He does, doesn't he? Because he needs that hatchery. He needs it badly. Ah, well done there by Trout. Now, Serral was building the queen anyway. If it wasn't blocked, he could have always cancelled the queen and put the hatch down, but well played by Trap. Serral not turning his lings around to chase that. He's going across the map, but already a few seconds delay means that he doesn't have to leave a probe in the wall. And I'd love to see Trap actually try to not pull so many probes as he did before. It's always a little scary. So he does pull a few probes down. Yeah, he doesn't want to lose the gateway. So he's got to do the Zealot dance here, threatening to come out and start hitting the Zealot, the, the, the Zerglings. And the probes are going to guard the wall in behind that. He's taking a lot of damage. That extra Zealot needs to be out as insurance here. Chrono boosting an Adept. And another Adept already on the way on the other gateway as well. It's time to go. Trap's got to fight. He's got to fight. He can't not fight. Okay. Oh, good micro, good micro. Mineral walking the probes. Oh, he saves all the probes. One Zealot does get surrounded, though. Nice surround by Serral. Can he get another probe? No. Nicely done by Trap. And look at that. The Adept comes out, keeps the Zealot alive. What was that? Just one Zealot for eight lings? Oh, fantastic micro. What did I just do? Sorry, guys. Oh, my God. I just I rewound the replay 10 seconds. People were saying try Shift B. Because apparently, they're thinking this might be played on the, the new mod uh, where you can see a battle summary. Uh, it was not. Shout out to Nice Username for making that mod. You would have seen it in the TSL tournament recently. Zergling buying a little bit of time. So not as good of an opening for Serral this time around. Remember last time when he was defending the counterattack, he was already on 23 drones and had a third queen out front to greet the Adepts. This time only two queens and only 20 workers. His first cast only now going down. A much better defense by Trap, who once again goes for a rather late Nexus. But he's got a Twilight Council down behind it. It's just a two adept single zealot pressure. He's not committing as much to the counterattack as he did in the previous game. He's going to come on forward. Creep Tumor does finish up. These queens there, of course, tickling the adepts. Zerglings in the main say, please finish the shade. Let us surround and kill you. And Trap actually goes for it. Oh, a wild move. Okay, he gets one drone. 
Can he get another? Serral not quick enough to pull that drone away. He's going to lose it. Ooh, three drones. Okay. Not, 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 not bad. Not amazing, but three drones this early is impactful. He's going for a robo behind it. A high risk move there from Trap, but... Oh, he's actually going for Glaives. We might even see him pull off Gas here in a little bit as well and focus more on the Minerals as this Nexus finish. We haven't seen Serral go up against that. He's been playing against Stargate over and over again. It's scary as Trap because you know Serral's really good against Glaive Adepts. But I think this is the perfect time. Game six of the series. And it's you're like, okay, let's let's actually throw a curveball. Like, there's a point where as a Zerg player, he's been playing in Stargate repeatedly, you just start to assume it's coming. Even if you're trying to play safe and scout and everything like that, at a certain point, you will simply not expect Glaive Adepts to be the answer. Now, the Overlord flies through and sees the whole base because Serral's scouting is perfect, so never mind. Uh, <laughs> sees the Twilight upgrading. Oh, his Roach Warren's really slow, though. I don't know if he paid attention to that Overlord straight away. He might have been looking elsewhere. Because that Roach Warren's really late. It doesn't have that many drones, I guess. Oh, he really needs more drones before he starts building Roaches. Feels like he's a little behind the curve here. Oh, he's building three more. He's going to go 37 drone Roaches. He's got two Overlords on the way. He's trying to squeeze a few more drones, but these Adepts might just be a little bit too early. Oh, Zerglings. Oh, I don't think that's a good move. Oh, no. Oh, no. Why are they out there without Ling Speed? Oh, Serral's Ling, and he's building more Lings right before his Roach Horn finishes. That's a disaster. This is really bad. He loses another four, four Zerglings there. That was not good. Adepts are warping in now. It's only three uh, Adepts to start. There's four Gateways, but didn't have enough money for all of them. So there we go. Six Adepts, the seventh one warping in. They're going to start to threaten. Just Queens and Zerglings fought now. Ling Speed is finally done. And uh, Trap, there's no way he finishes that one. That would have been crazy. There's Adept starting to group up over there. He's going to be able to warp in a few more in a moment. 41 probes versus 37 drones. And you can see here Trap continuing to progress, adding that gas on. The Overlord goes back in for a scout. Doesn't see a DT shrine. It's a lot of Adepts being warped in. A few Ravagers coming in right now. These Queens. Oh, the Queen with the energy stuck up front. She goes down before the other one gets energy to transfuse her. Literally 49 energy when she dies. Uh-oh, third base is in trouble right now. The Lings cannot surround that, though. The Roaches and the Ravagers can pick off from afar. The Lings have got to be ready here. You can see that Serral, he's got Zerglings on two, Ravagers on one. I don't think you should overcommit here as Trap. Yes, Robo Bay, fourth gas, and he's probing. Trap here, very smart. Building a shield battery for safety. I'd like to see Immortals and Sentries come out behind this as well in the near future. We've got two Adepts branching to the right. And I think this is a great advantage Trap's built for himself. 45 probes to 38 drones. Serral's trying to get a lair and a Baneling Nest, but I don't think those the Baneling Nest is really important for a long time in this game. I think he needs to drone more than anything else. And he is trying to do that. He's, he's slowly catching up. He's got a lot of creep tumors. Gives him some good map control. Still no sentries warping in. It's just speed prism disruptor by the looks of it. So two disruptors being chronoed. Prism will go back, pick those up, and come in and look for some drop action. Trap's one of the best players in the world with that. They're obviously playing on the North American server. It's the most middle server between Finland and Korea. For those who don't know, we've had some questions recently. Why would they play there? Unfortunately, there's no Kazakhstan servers, guys. No Kazakhstan or Mongolia. The Adepts do take down just one drone. Good defense so far from Serral. He's got wings there as well. Don't let your Banelings blow up. Nice cancel on that shade there. He needs to go pick up those two disruptors. He's got a firm, firm uh, warp prism with two disruptors underneath it. A Colossus on the way. Third base is there now. It is 58 probes to 47 drones. So Serral's, as always, found his way back to a good position. He's got an Evo chamber. He's got Bane speed, Roach speed, all of these sorts of things. Now, he can't really go for a big attack himself. But Lings will be fantastic for dealing with the Warp Prism. Seeing speed on it, he should know that's going to be disruptive. Isn't it? So he's trying to stay on top of it. It's a very dangerous drop for Trap. He was hoping Serral would panic and pull back and let the shot finish. Serral knew he had enough damage on top of it. Now you can just follow that with Zerglings. It's not a bad way to do it. But uh, for now, getting up to 67 drones. He wants to go take a fourth hatchery, does Serral. But here comes an attack. Only 47 workers. Oh, what? He's doing it all in. I didn't even realize he's actually not probing that third. It really looked like Trap was going to be building for a longer game, but he's just doing a brutal timing attack. 16 Glaive Adepts. Serral needs a lot more Banelings right now. Bane Speed and Roach Speed aren't quite ready. Serral might need to just give up his third. 
There's not many force fields, but even a couple force fields combined with the Colossus roosting Zerglings, not to mention the Disruptor Shots. He needs Bane Speed and Roach Speed. Serral's not quite ready. He's a little too clumped right now. Serral's got to pull back. I don't think he can fight here. He's going to try and take it. Biles is trying to break through. The Disruptor Shot is huge. Banelings find a connection, but look at those force fields protecting the Adepts. A lot of the Banelings wash up on the Stalkers. They're all getting focused down from afar. A beautiful engagement set up here. Trap catching him. A big Disruptor Shot takes down two Ravages and a queen. Oh my god, Serral is taking huge hits. He was not ready for this fight. He did not expect this at all. Oh my god. Dude, what a narrow, nice edge attack. Trap is a brave boy. Guys, if he waited another 30 seconds, Bane Speed, Roach Speed's done. And he's got Ravages out front welcoming this, dropping files on it. I do think Serral messed up his engagement really badly. He had creep. He saw what this army was. And I do think Serral messed up. Now, I think Serral needed to, if he was going to fight here, spread half of his army down here and over there as needed. And he needed to spread some units up there. I think he needed to look for a big old surround. Now, the reason he was worried is if he just kind of comes in willy-nilly, what's going to happen? Zerglings are going to get wrecked by Adepts. Your Banelings need to find the Adepts. Your Zerglings need to try and find the Stalkers, the Disruptors. Your Ravagers need to break the Force Fields. There's a lot of things you've got to coordinate. The Colossus as well, a massive anti-Zergling laser, laser annihilator. So you can see why Serral kind of wanted to keep his army together. Banelings kill Adepts while Ravagers break Force Fields and he can crack through. But he clumps up way too much for both Force Fields and Disruptor Shots and he should have just disengaged. So he traps himself down here in a tight little corner. I think Serral got a little bit too tense in this game and trap like the, the decisiveness to just shove right in. Those Force Fields letting the Banelings trickle onto a Stalker rather than the Adepts. Dude, this is a picture perfect push here from Trap. Well, Serral not scouting the fact that he didn't have probes on the third as well. How did he not scout that? I guess the third was quite late anyway, right? So, and it's, it's normal to have a late third. But Serral didn't have an Overseer scouting. So if Serral had an Overseer scout at any time during this or a Speed Overlord, he could have seen that there's no flashing lights on the Nexus. So whenever you build probes, there's a flashing light on this horseshoe. So notice a pro he does queue two more probes here. So let me slow that right down. See how there's this flashing lights? So if you see he's not producing probes, there's no lights there, Serral would go, oh, that's a fake. And he wouldn't have droned quite as hard, would have had a few more Ravages ready, and probably would have been able to hold on. But Trap, getting, getting in there with a tight timing, keeping him busy with the Adept drop. Damned well played. And here we go. It is the final map of the Grand Finals. I can't believe we've made it to this point. This man down here, he had a good lead early on. And now he finds himself on what I would consider a rather strong Protoss map. Very hard to assault them. A lot of choke points. And the bottom left, it is Serral. And surprise, he didn't pick the map earlier, actually. Once again, going for a pro block, because why not? It is Trap. Now, Serral, he's going 15 hatch again. But I think this probe is early enough to block a 15 hatch. He sent one of his very first probes across the map. Oh, Serral's going to be triggered. Oh, does he get it? No, he gets it. He gets it. Just in time. Ooh, okay. How does Trap keep going for this? I feel like this is such an advantage for Serral. When he goes 15 hatch like that. That's a great start. Like, if they've gone for such an early probe... I don't know. It feels kind of bad for Trap, but... I guess Trap just keeps hoping that Serral's like, Well, you're not going to do it this time. Tries to go for a 16 hatch, gets blocked, and is kind of annoyed. And Trap still gets value out of the probe, right? He still comes in, harasses does what he can. Notice that Serral's always going spawning pool before gas recently, guys. So this is a cool little adjustment, which is something I'm going to start doing. Now, the reason why he does this is he wants to get his Zerglings out nice and early so that he can sneak in before the second gateway unit pops. He wants to make sure, even if they chrono boost that second gateway unit, that he gets in there before it pops out. So it's a really nice way of just making sure he can, he can build a couple Zerglings, get those across the map as early as possible, especially with the 15 hatch. Um, your hatchery is sooner, so you want to be able to build both queens at the same time. Getting the pool a little bit earlier means you can go bam, both queens a few seconds faster, and it gives you a bit of extra lava production. So even though you're droning uh, a little bit slower early on, it doesn't matter. You just delay putting guys on gas, so you're still very mineral focused. You get those two queens. And does he prioritize the lings or the queens? So the two queens start, two lings from the natural immediately, and that's going to be such a quick scout. This is really nice. Really nice. 
Now, let me get a Stargate here, right underneath the Overlord again. Come on, it's game seven. It's game seven, Trap. Show him everything. Why not? Just build it under the Overlord. You know you want to. Why is not cancelling Warp Gate just yet? Trap wants to build tech, but he doesn't want to show it. Stalker is going to push back the Overlord, but the Overlord's playing it safe. And he actually hides the Stargate, and it's not delayed too long. It's about 10, 15 seconds delayed from when he could have put it down. That Overlord, ooh, ooh, actually, he went and turned around for a moment. He's going to take a lot of damage. That Stalker could move there, get another shot off, I think. Get it down to like 40 hit points. Oh, pretty close to death. Now, Zergling does walk in, as we talked about. If they go after the Overlord, the Zergling comes in. I'm actually so happy that Serral's using my scouting pattern. This is literally my scouting pattern, guys. I always say First Overlord goes in, skirts the edge of the main. So if they stay at the front with the Stalker or the Adept, Overlord goes in. And if it comes after the Overlord, you run south into the dead space, which... Oh no, he's, he's moving really risky there. Oh, because he wants to get away from the Void Ray. But Trap turns around, he doesn't get it. Oh! So anyway, yeah. And then if, if they're doing that, if, if they go after you, your Zerglings can walk right in the front door. So I love that Sarah's using that. Um... It was like six months ago, Eon Blue was actually struggling in this matchup. And I was like, and he was like, yeah, man, can you, can you take a look at one of my games? Like, like, I just, I don't know how to scout what they're doing consistently. And we did a little, little session going over it and kind of learning. Cause I was like, yeah, I'm not sure actually, like what is the safest way to scout? And I think we're, we're looking through different options. We decided that was a nice simple way at a high level to reliably get scouting information. And it's, uh, it's cool to see it's, it, I've been doing it ever since then. I mean, it was a year ago. It was, it was a while back. And uh, it's always validating when a, a pro gamer ends up doing something you've kind of figured out for yourself. I mean, it was partially inspired by other people's moves, but always uh, always good to see. Now, Ovi Speed's coming down. Doesn't want to get tricked in the final game. Serral, always a man who plays mega safe towards the uh, end of a series. That Void Ray barely fires his Overlord down here. Finally gets its first kill and a second Stargate on the way. Now, this is the style that Serral has struggled against. He's got to scout it, and he's got to scout it early. So I think with OV speed, the problem is, I think he's going to lose that Overlord before. Oh, oh, his queens need to get out here. He's got to, he's got to target that Void Ray. He's going to target the Oracle at first, but yeah, Void Ray is going to get a good snipe. It'll take hardly any hit point damage. Nicely done. Now, serral has got OV speed, but he doesn't have any Overlords on the map. So he's trying to send another one out, but... Oh, you got to see what's going on. So for me, I feel like Serral has been a bit too Roach-focused. Uh, in his games where he should be rushing for Hydra Bane a little bit more. Like, this is a really late layer. It's a 4 minute 45 layer. Yeah, he's gonna have a big economy. I still do think he could win with this style, but he's gonna keep his eyes on it. Keep his eyes on the on the ball. He's talking about a series versus Showtime. It was actually this map. I realized it was Oxide where he broke in with Hydra Bane. Showtime. And that Overlord will get through. A few more gateways going down. Bit of a later Twilight and Forge this time around for uh, Trap. I think he's going to drop those right now. There we go. Yeah, losing another Overlord is painful. But work account wise, it looks okay. Uh, those Void Rays, of course, going to start marauding around the map. And I do wonder, does Serral just opt for this fourth base? I always like to expand in a straight line along the bottom of the map. Man, this is such a stressful moment for both players. That Zergling will go down. Small worker lead for Zerg, but he hasn't started building a lot of mobile interior. He's massing queens again. Serral, what is this build? Okay, so Serral's massing queens, I think. Okay, he still does go for Hydra Bane. Good, good, good. So it's just queens for the initial defense, up into Hydra Bane behind that. Mm, I think there's definitely power for rushing. If you realize or you think, if your opponent's reliably doing this build, I do think rushing Hydra Bane is way better than what Serral's doing. Just because you, you, the problem with this is Protoss gets to see you just can't be aggressive at all. And he can just go Templar Archives, Storm, make a bunch of high Templar. He's going to have so much Storm, Shield, Batteries, and Cannons by the time you can attack. But I guess Trap does need to move out and secure a fourth. To really be solid against Hydra Bane, you need a fourth base. You can't just be on three bases. Because Serral is building up to 80 plus workers. He's going to have an overwhelming force of Hydra Bane. And Trap, I mean, he's got to be really good at preserving his units. I like that he's only on five Void Rays. This Oracle, oh man, this was such a nuisance for Serral on Death Aura. And once again, feels like just the threat of the Void Rays forces him to move his spores forward. And his mineral lines are a little bit open. Psystorm starts up immediately. Yeah, look at that greed, man. Isn't that just the most ridiculous greed? Straight for Psystorm. 
There's five void rays here, seven zealots, just one sentry. There's High Templar warping, already gathering energy before the first Hydra upgrade's even done. That's what I'm talking about, man. Serral has not queued up muscular augments just yet. He's trying to squeeze out a few more drones, a couple of Hydras and Lings, nice and early. I kind of wish he built a few more drones first, but he's making a few Banes as well. He just wants to be a little bit safer. Uh, if, he, if he was on the other side of the map, I think he could maybe delay this fourth. So he's going to break these rocks and walk across the map, but the cannons and the batteries are already starting. Already three shield batteries. And this is where things, yep, yeah, three cannons, uh, or two cannons, sorry. Three cannons and a battery there. Three batteries down here. Trap is setting up the wall, man. He's setting up for that Shield of Aya style play. The Wing Commander himself, who, who loves having Sky Toss, but is also a master of the storm defense, is going to be doing that. And I mean, Queens are just not going to help offensively, right? So I think Serral just now has queued up a ton of injects with his Queens. He said, okay, guys, stack some injects on all these hatcheries. And then he's maybe going to bring his queens with his push, which they could be useful just as like a tanking unit. They're just not very maneuverable. So it's going to be kind of like a slow support unit, dropping a few transfusers on hydras, that sort of thing. 28 hydras are out. That's a ton of hydras. It's basically a mass hydra push with some Ling Bane support. Melee, nowhere near finish. The Oracle comes over. Nice tag. Got to watch out for the Sire Storms there, does Serral. He's going to break these rocks down. Look at the cannon battery wall, though. Trap starts with a storm, only clips four Hydras. I think Serral's very happy to get hit by Sire Storms that only clip four Hydras. It's really the big juicy ones you got to watch out for now. The Queens are coming forward. They don't have creep here just yet. Oh, okay. I think those Queens are doing just fine, man. Let the Queens tank and fight. They are happy to do so. The Observer goes down there. Okay, Trap is hanging on with just a bunch of Sire Storm, some Void Rays, cannons and batteries. He's looking for more big juicy storms in the middle of those Queens. Serral, once again, is only attacking one angle. Zealots come in from the side. Serral's trying to do a big frontal push. I don't know if there's going to work. There's so much storm, man. The Bailings do push back some of the High Templars, but there's more where that came from. Void Ray's starting to fall. Those Void Ray's a little slow to pull back for Trap. Morphing Archons, though, keeping all of his High Templar alive. He's got one more Stormer. One more Stormer there, and it's going to get a big storm. Does take a few Hydras out. Okay, that left flank does go down. The Zealots have actually been F2'd home, funnily enough. Such a close defense. He's got to get his Hydras home, but he's not going to be able to. Trap's hungry. Trap wants to chase him down. Those Hydras need to get out of there, man. This is this is too much Protoss. Now, you can easy defend that counterattack once you get some more Hydras and Banes out. So a good, healthy pullback by Serral. He's on 10 Hydras, 16 more on the way. He cranked the wall. If he could get back over there with these Banes before it's back up, I think this is the perfect angle. Don't change angles now, Serral. If he attacks the same angle, there is a weak point. Now, okay, the middle area, also another new front where there's no cannons and batteries. These are all decent choices. But look at the Zealot flank potential. Trap may attack from two sides. If he can get a big old Zealot surround, that'll be huge. Not to mention if the Storms take out a bunch of the Banes. Lings come in from the right, start to take down some of those cannons and batteries. Nice play by Trap. Just moves forward, hold positions, takes out a few of those. And here we go. The Zealot's on the left, Zealot's on the right. A lot of Psy Storm here. Serral here not spreading that much before the fight starts. I'd like to see some more methodical spreadies. Take some big storms to the faces. Baneling count's getting very low. There's still a lot of Psy Storm in the back. I think Serral may need to disengage and rebuild his Hydra count. That's too much Psy Storm. He's got to get back. That was a great defense by Trap. His first two carriers are about to pop onto the field. He does lose six probes to Baneling's on the right side. Oh, but has Serral let him rebuild his defenses potentially? I love the way he pulled back to the shield batteries and used the overcharge. Trap is hanging on on four bases very well. Serral's fifth is almost finished again. This time around, Serral has not overextended to the point where he lost all of his Hydras. Are the trades kind of nasty? Yes. But you can still win with some somewhat nasty trades in this scenario. The, the Protoss doesn't have everything they need just yet. Two carriers is not that scary. Oh, if only those Lings ran in, there was nothing in the natural wall. Okay, he's got to spread out more. Serral's way too clumped. He keeps going in way too clumped. Oh, Serral, he's so horny trying to finish the game. And you know what? It's not going to work out. There's a giant zealot run by hitting him. His hydras are getting caught. Yes, Trap is jumping on top of it. And Serral, overextending, unable, running past the time where the sand has run out of the hourglass. And an almost surprising moment to GG. But I mean, I tell you guys, if you've never played Hydra Bane versus a top Skytoss Storm player, there is a point where you take those trades and it's getting worse and worse for you. You don't have double spire on the way. You don't have anything like that going just yet. 
It's nasty. And I do look at these games and I do think squeezing like Bane drops in the back or a Nidus Worm or something like that, because it does feel to me like Trap is defending with a bare minimum of units, right? It's, it's almost purely Storm Void Rays on the first waves. But damn, Trap weathers the storm. I think he found the style that Serral's not too confident against them. This is fascinating because this particular style has been making top level Zergs look hopeless. When you play this perfectly, some of the top level Zergs, I've seen like Zest do this and just crush so many players over and over again. Uh, and, and then look like they have no clue what to do against it. So to see Trap here bring this series back and win 4-3 against Serral, I mean, this is incredible. Really bloody well played. God damn, man. So let's look at this first attack. He breaks down the rocks. He wants a nice wide open area. For me, I look at this style and the fragility with which the Protoss builds up. And like I said, I do feel if you can get Hydra Bane early, like Queen's just not great for a push like this. That's why I don't like this version of it. But it's because Trap stayed flexible. Yeah, he played Void Ray's most games, but only two games. This one in Romanticide where he played five to six two-star Void Ray. And there was a game where he played a Resonating Glaze build. Serral was not able to blind counter him because Trap played flexible. Serral felt like he had to play a heavy Queen style first. Much delayed Hydra Bane. And the fact is, if your first attack is hitting when the Protoss already has four batteries and five cannons finished on their base, you fucking missed your window. I get you can technically engage a bit better here, Sarah. I do think he could have maybe broken those rocks down as well, attacked from multiple angles. I think he kept clumping up way too much in all of these fights on this map and in Death Aura. I do think maybe he could have opened a new front by attacking elsewhere. I think there's multiple options that are available to him. But Trap just defended so damned well. Uh, he got the cannon battery up so early. He was so busy with the Void Rays and the Oracle to see that he could get away with that. And look at that. The Zealot run base. The Zealots aren't going to be very good crashing into Hydra Main. But look at that. Serral pulls his army back, splits units off to deal with it. They come back in. Big juicy Psy Storm. Void Rays engage the Queens while they try to dodge the Psy Storm. But this here, like look at that engagement. That is a terrible angle for Serral. I think he, he felt like he needed to push through and tank a storm or two and overwhelm. But he ends up just clumping his army into the juiciest of Psy Storms over and over again. Super juicy on the left. We don't really care about the Queens getting hit. It's more about the Hydras. The Void Rays were a little slow to pull back in that fight. But those storms, dude, those storms are just deadly. The fact that this mineral line isn't even getting overrun, right? Like, you can kind of imagine, he's actually clicking on these pylons, trying to depower all this. If he had a few more Banelings, he could kill both pylons. There's no shield batteries left, right? There's a full probe line. How the fuck is there 10 probes in this probe line that are untouched during this, right? You can see that this is still a very fragile defense for Trap. He manages to pull it together, warp in Zealots, chase Serral back a little bit. But damn, there's a scary moment there, man. I do like that he splits his zealots up. He warps in more High Templar for Storm. I think he's a little slow to drop the next wave of cannons and batteries. There's an argument here that Serral could have just jumped on him now, but he's got so much size Storm, it's kind of a dicey argument. So round two, look at the way Trap keeps coming forward and trying to storm him while he's clumped up. Gets a few Banelings morphing there as well. Lings on the right, pull back. They're going to morph Banes and rally into the Mineral Line. But I do think here, like, Serral needed to just start doing bigger and bigger spreadies. Like, in this scenario, grab all those Banelings, click the Zealot, and then try to get in the Mineral Line, maybe. Especially if you run there and then into the Mineral Line. And just keep spreading these Hydras out in a bigger and bigger arc. There's not that much crazy range damage. There's only three Voids left with six range. Other than that, what is there that actually does sustain damage? It's Zealots. Yes, if you're spread out in an arc, the Zealots can kind of get surface area, but your Hydras are still going to be covering each other, and you can grab little squads of Banelings and click them into the Zealots. But I think there was too much of this, let's kind of do a bit of a spread, and then immediately follow it by clumping into your Psy Storms. And he did it too many times in this, in this game, in this series. And uh, yeah, just great D by Trap, moving forward, dropping Storms, pulling back, moving forward, dropping Storms, pulling back, pulling back, pulling back, and... Serral kept kind of trying to chase him down a little bit too much. And that the rule of splash damage in StarCraft 2, if there's a lot of splash, you want to pull backwards. The way you micro-hero Serral is you spread units here, 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 here. And then you can say, well, then he just pulls back. Because he's not going to attack into your concave. Yeah. 
So you crash some of that Hydra Bane up into the natural. You force him to start... He's got nothing up there. You force him to at least warp in some units there. You crash some units up this ramp. Now, he's just got Psy Storm, so that's even more deadly, right? But you, you, before they were there, you could crash up there. And, and I do once again say, maybe a Baneling drop is actually useful. Maybe we were getting too one-dimensional. It felt like Serral was going for a one-dimensional set play. Trap was getting a good read for it and realized he just needed to defend the front. And he just needed to storm down these giant clumps of Baneling Serral was rolling in with. This was not the most efficient attack for Serral. And if you play a slow Hydra Bane style like he did off the back of 10 Queens, it's something where you have to hit it really efficiently and slowly and they needs to be spreading and methodically baiting out all of the Psy Storms and running four Hydras forward and killing a High Templar in the front of their army and sacking a few Hydras for it and, and, and running Ling Bane into their mineral line while they come and try to deal with you. It's very fragile and hard to deal with. So don't get me wrong, Serral is still an absolute god, but today Trap is the king. Right now, the last couple of months, Trap is dominant and in a, a time where right now Protoss players are struggling, he stands head and shoulders above everyone and says, Protoss players might be struggling, but I'm not. Trap is the final boss. GG, mate. You're an absolute legend.